Hello, my name is Mildred Louise Young Harris. I am the senior pastor of the Queen Chapel Independent Methodist Church located in historical Kingston, Georgia. I also serve as a city councilwoman for the great city of Kingston. This is my second four-year term. Also, a part uh, woven into uh, my duties, I am the president of the Nova Hill Wheeler Memorial Center and I serve as the chair lady of the NAACP Bartow County Branch Scholarship Committee. What got me interested in this subject, the subject of the Queen Chapel Methodist Church, and now, of course, the city of Kingston and the story in regards to um, the former First Lady Michelle Obama, her uh, third generation grandmother, Maddie Magruder Shields. What got me interested is, is because I am a person that love history. I am a person that love to dig deeper and find out the, the when, the where, the how, and why not. I like all of that. It, it challenges me. And I think when we do find that information out, it's good to share it with others along the way. Yes. I think because my love for Kingston, my love for Queen Chapel, that is why I'm interested. The most, what, what do I find most impactful in regards to my research and research and information about the Queen Chapel Methodist Church, Independent Methodist Church, is that it has a strong history and where it came from being that it was known at one time as the Colored Methodist Church located in the Conesina area out under a bush and then becoming a church that was built out of planks that the individuals, the congregation had to harvest themselves and then finding their way to the city of Kingston just you know, in search of a, a new place to erect a church and find out that God was just so gracious enough and gave them uh, the church, the Primitive Baptist Church, bequeathed, gave the church to the colored congregation, colored Methodist church at that time. And then the church came together and decided that they would rename themselves since, since they now had arrived to Kingston and they were sitting there on a hill and they renamed themselves as Queen Chapel Methodist Church. It also interested me that, you know, the church was only able to meet one Sunday a month, but they had a benevolent hearts and that they shared with others and they joined in with other congregations to worship God. And that is still prevalent today. We join in with other churches. Of course, we do have the four Sunday services. And then on the fifth Sunday, we join uh, with uh, the connectional churches in the area and have what we call a fifth Sunday mission. So uh, that is what interests me. And what interests me, um, I, I would say today and keep me going and as the senior pastor, is that Queen Chapel has a desire to spread the gospel, the word of God. And Queen Chapel, through it all, is still standing today. And through it all, Queen Chapel has a will and a drive to seek after God, to press on up the King's Highway, because we are queen, to see what the end will be. Okay. That's mine.
St. Patrick's Day themed puck crawl, so you come out and be a part of that. You have to buy a ticket to the puck crawl through the DBA website, but you can add a, an add-on ticket to visit the museum, have a special themed cocktail, and listen to a Celtic band. What's that again? The Landmark. Landmark. There's a great thing <clears throat> Go ahead. Good afternoon, ladies and our gentlemen. Good afternoon, and thank you so much, Trey, for that uh, warm introduction. Thank you so very much. Today, um, I am so thankful to be invited to share with you all uh, some little perks about the Queen Chapel Independent Methodist Church, which is located in the historical city of Kingston, Georgia, and also to incorporate some little snippets in regards to Melvinia Maddie Magruder Shields uh, about her and the former First Lady Michelle Obama and their connection to the Kingston area and directly connected to the Queen Chapel Methodist Church family by way of the Applins in our um, city and part of our congregation. Before you today, I have prepared a little packet and the little packet will have information about the Queen Chapel Independent Methodist Church. It's beginning and um, <clears throat> along the way some things that happen and where we are today. Also in your packet you will have a brochure in regards to the historical city where I serve as a city councilwoman a second four term year, uh, a brochure in regards to our beautiful city and also a brochure of the uh, African um, American uh, Trail and the events and things to see here in the Cartersville Bartow County area. And there again, you do have a brochure in there in regards to the Maddie Magruder um, monument that is there in the cemetery there in Kingston at the Queen Chapel Cemetery. But ladies and gentlemen, again, let me say thank you for joining us today for this Lunch and Learn. And certainly I am praying that we'll be able to take some nuggets away from this event. And of course, you all know that I am a preacher, I am a pastor, so let us have just a little word of prayer. Father God Almighty, we thank you so much. We invite you to come before us, Lord God, and impart into our souls, our minds, and our bodies, and our spirits, and let us receive what you have for us. In Jesus' name we do pray, amen. Amen. God is so good. Ladies and gentlemen, the Queen Chapel Independent Methodist Church was established in 1852. And of course, I don't know if everybody know, but of course, it is in the middle of the cemetery there in Kingston, Georgia, the historical cemetery. It sits right in the middle. And it's the Kingston Cemetery and the Queen Chapel Cemetery. But Queen Chapel is seated right there in the middle 
What about that, ladies and gentlemen? Life among the dead. <laughs> life among the dead. Now, can't you say that God is good and there is life in the name of Jesus? Well, there we sit in the middle of the cemetery, which is customarily known and was referred to as the city cemetery in its origin, in its beginning. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, it is one of the most fascinating and most interesting uh, cemeteries and area and incorporated with our church than I think anywhere in the world. I really do. Oh, let me just tell you before we get any further. I love my city, Kingston. I love Kingston, historical Kingston. And you know what? And I love Queen Chapel Methodist Church. And you know, and if I love those two, I love you guys as well. But what's so interesting about Queen Chapel and what's so interesting about the cemeteries that Queen Chapel is seated in the middle of, it's because when you drive up on the right, on the left, you will be in what some people would say the white cemetery, but I beg your difference because black are buried there as well. Some people will say on, on your right, excuse me, on your left when you drive it on your right, well, that's the black cemetery. Well, I beg your difference. We have whites and Indians and some of everything else buried over there as well. Well, there we sit in the middle. Some people might drive up and they might see on the left, they might see the Confederacy flag that's on top of the hill. And here we are, a black church sitting here. Happy, joyful, praying, you know, singing, and just in love, you know. And um, people might say, well, Oh my gosh, what a combination. Well, the, you know, the interesting thing that they don't know is that on the right and right there beside the church are Confederate graves as well. Don't you agree with me? That's kind of interesting, isn't it? That, that, that is something that kind of make you say, hmm, wait a minute now, kind of, you know, touch your nose, scratch your nose. Somebody might have to blow their nose, you know what I mean? <laughs> but they say, well, what in the world and why are these black folks sitting here in the middle in the Confederacy flag and here the graves over here? Well, children, well, attendees, let me tell you one thing. The gray and blue history is our history as well. It's our history as well. We too fought in the wars as well. We too was part of the war as well. But reeling it back in to Queen Chapel, <clears throat> there we sit in the middle. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, do you not know that Queen Chapel Church also served as a hospital during the time of the Civil War. Do you not know? And there we sit. There we pray. There we love. There we eat. There we spread the gospel. And we say Jesus is love. And we say he is good. And then we back it up and say he's good all the time. So that gives you the inkling that we know that we must be about love. And that Queen Chapel has you know, to be what God want us to be. And that's where God wanted Queen Chapel to be. Well, during that time in 1852 when Queen Chapel was <coughs> reestablished and uh, reorganized and um, came into the existence of the Kingston area. Oh, by the way, prior to this, Queen Chapel was known as the colored, the colored uh, Methodist Church, the colored Methodist, Methodist Church. Back then, they didn't know what color we were, so they just said colored. <laughs> so we were the colored Methodist Church. 
And of course, it was part of the African Methodist Episcopal uh, denomination. And it was located in the Conasena area. Anybody familiar with that? Go up Hall Station Road and you'll run into the Conasena area. Well, it was there in the Conasena area. And of course, at that time, Kingston, a man was, uh, I'm a preacher, y'all excuse me. <laughs> so at that time, Kingston was growing and it was vibing and it was a, a hustling and a bustling town because of the railroad. So people were leaving out of the bushes and out of the weeds and they were coming to town, you know, for that Sunday stroll. So I would just imagine, I would just imagine because, you know, I, I don't even know if I was thought of during that time, but if I was, I would just imagine that my people during that time, and I'm pretty sure that, you know, they started out in what, what you would call a bush church at that time. They started out as in a bush church and then gradually to a plank tr church. A plank, when you say a plank, they would have cut down some timber and would have handmade the wood, the slabs, to build the church. And I'm pretty sure they had what uh, some people would call back in the olden days, croaker sacks or, or, or drag sacks or cotton sacks. They had those hanging on the window. Well, I, I'm pretty sure, according to our history, Virgil Woolley and A.B. Reynolds and Virgil at that time, he uh, owned a um, stagecoach business. And at that time, they knew what was happening in Kingston. So they too wanted to move up. They too had that inkling and wanted to move up. So they decided to raise money and to see where Queen Chapel, well at that time, the Colored Methodist Church would go at that time. Well, of course, uh, Sherman and his folks had come to town, and, and we all know the story and what happened to Kingston and, and going up in flame. And, but ironically, everything pretty much burned, but our churches were spared. And of course, Queen Chapel at that time was the primitive Baptist church, and it was spared as well. And like I said, and it had been used as the hospital and also a mortuary for you know, the soldiers. And so at that time, uh, the primitive congregation, they had decided that they were going to unroot themselves and leave the Kingston area. Well, of course, here come the colored Methodist church. Here we are and needing a place to go. Well, aren't you so thankful for people with benevolent hearts? It's just a wonder. See, God wanted us to be there. So therefore, the primitive pastors, their staff, their congregation came to the colored Methodist uh, congregation. And at that time, a, they had a circuit pastor. Um, we would just consider it as a circuit. Come there, you come to Kingston one time a month. The preacher would come, licentiate preacher would come one time a month. And he also had to serve Cartersville, and what the, he served the area that's called Pine Grove, and he called served the area that called uh, Summer Hill over in the Rome area, and if um, he had Summer Hill, he had he had the St. Luke area, St. Luke here in Kings in uh, Cartersville, Queen Chapel in Kingston, Summer Hill in Rome, he had Grace Chapel in Adairsville. He had the Piney Grove up in Pine Grove, if there was a fifth Sunday. So there was the five Sundays. So that was the circuit preacher. So they had come to us and asked if we needed a place. Now, let, let me tell you that the church was not in good condition. It did suffer some burns. It did suffer some stench from the dead and some stench from caring for the wounded in there. And it had to be cleaned up. And do you know, ladies and gentlemen, they came to the colored congregation and gave the church to the members? 
And so I'm pretty sure in my own dialect and in my own thoughts that uh, the congregation said, Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Whoopie doo, we're going to town. <laughs> so they gathered up everything, probably got some, you know, some of the, those little grass vines or something and wrapped up everything they had and headed off to Kingston. And so that's how they derived to Kingston. And then after they got there, they began to repair, raise money and to repair the church. And they began to worship, even though they are right there in the middle of the cemetery. And trust me, at that time, no black graves were over there on the uh, right at that time. It was the Confederates that was buried on the hill at that time. And, and the one, the 12 graves right there at the uh, church, they were there. But the church, thank God, and moved on according to God's will that we would be there as a symbol of peace and as a symbol that we can love and we can be a part of a productive city, a productive, striving city of Kingston and part of the Christian congregation. God is just so good. And then the whites, they came in. The other churches in the city of Kingston came in and gave help too. Well, then, you know, we're in town now. We were just known as the color church. We didn't really have a name. Everybody was on the circuit. Everybody pretty much, I'm thinking, throughout was just known as the colored church. We didn't have no direct distinction. You know, our identity was in a pool. You see what I'm saying? And so the bishop, the circuit bishop, the circuit elder, the pastor, and the stewards, see, in the Methodism, we have stewards, not deacons. The Baptists have the deacons. So the stewards and the trustees and, of course, the uh, mothers of the church, they all came together and said, well, we're uptown now. We're in Kingston. This is my own perception. Michelle, you know about that, how you have to play act stuff. <laughs> you know, and they said, we need to have a name. They came together and they decided, said, well, since God has blessed us and he's brought us to Kingston out of the bush from out on Conocena Road, way back in the bushes, he on the dirt roads and, and the horse and the buggy, and brought us to town in Kingston and set us up on this hill and set us here. So when everybody come through, they'll see us. We must be a queen. <laughs> we must be a queen. <laughs> so they said, that's great. We will be known as Queen Chapel. And then everyone said, yes, we will be known as Queen Chapel. No longer, even though that's part of our history, but no longer just the colored Methodist church. We are now the queen. And from that day forward, Queen, queen Chapel began to run the race, telling the story with a lot of surety, a lot of ambition as to what God can do and how he can take you from a nobody and bring you to be somebody, and certainly at this point, a queen. <laughs> so there we are, Queen Chapel Methodist Church. Well, Queen Chapel started out, like I said, one Sunday a month. That not only entailed Queen Chapel, there are also in the city of Kingston at that time, the black churches, there was Shiloh Baptist Church. Oh, Michelle, that's where your family come from. Shiloh Baptist Church and St. Paul Baptist Church. And so it was three black churches at that time. So everybody was meeting one Sunday a month. So we incorporated with them. And of course, their church at that time wasn't as nice as Queen Chapel. So most Sundays, 
because we had a pot belly stove and they still just had a fireplace and most of the time nobody wanted to clean it out. And we had a big pot belly stove. I'm telling you from what my daddy told me. So they would, you know, come in. The winter months would love to come there because our church was much warmer. Trust me now, remember where we got the church from? It was a primitive Baptist church. It was a white church, and it was built to standards. So we had windows. Okay, we had floors. We didn't look down and see the chickens and the rabbits and everything else running under there. So we were a, what I say we were? A what? A queen. We were what? A queen. So they would come and worship with us as well. Not only that, we shared with the uh, white churches as well. And as of today, we are doing the same thing. Am I right about it? We're doing the same thing. We share our services together. The church is there in Kingston, Georgia. We don't consider ourselves as a white church or a black church. We're just the church of God. We all are God's children. We come together and we do several things together throughout the year in the city of Kingston. But getting back to Queen Chapel, and you know, as, as the years went along, and you're reading the story as to what uh, has transpired and trying to keep things abreast, but as the years went along, God just continued to bless Queen Chapel. And, and then Queen Chapel knew because of the blessings from God, we had to bless others as well. You know what the Bible says? Do unto others as what? Exactly. So we couldn't just keep taking in and not giving out because, you know, God just doesn't like that. So we, too, joined the missionary band. We started giving as well. We gave as well, even though our moms and our dads, moms was working in, you know, the homes of the whites and dads was cleaning the yards and plying and doing all that and picking cotton. We, too, gave back, you know, according to how God wanted us to give those that were in need. We, too, joined the missionary band. Well, uh, children, like I said, as time went on, Queen Chapel, and with its history and knowing uh, what it had come through, and as they continued to uh, improve the church, the congregation decided that we needed a bell. We needed a bell, a bell to put in the church steeple. We had a steeple. It was a primitive Baptist church, but it didn't have a bell. We decided we needed a bell. Why? Because the Kingston Methodist, United Methodist Church, had a bell. So, <laughs> so it is told that our, uh, our member said, well, we're a queen. We need a bell, too. <laughs> so the congregation came together, and they raised money, and they purchased a bell. They didn't just want a bell. They wanted a bell someone had seen and a a Sears Roebuck, anybody remember that? Sears Roebuck catalog, this is what my daddy told me. They saw a bell in that catalog and, and, and it could be ordered from England. And they were just like, we want this bell, we want that bell. So do you know they went together and they raised that money and they ordered that bell from England and the bell came and they come together with the mules, not no horse now, the mules, because the mules are stronger than the horse. They came together with their mules and harnessed that bell up in the steeple. And I am told, and it's in our, our notes here, I am told that you could hear that bell. It was the best bell. And you could hear that bell from miles and miles and miles around. And that bell was so significant and, and with the clarityness of it, the city of Kingston came to Queen Chapel and asked Queen Chapel to be the official bell ringer in times of war in times of a fire in the community. 
in times of a death, in times of a warrior, a soldier coming back home. Oh, can't you just hear the bell ringing, ding, 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 ding. Can't you just see everybody running to the front door, peeping out and say, oh, my Johnny is coming home. Can't you just see that? Or in his heart, ding, 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 somebody's house on fire, a field on fire, and everybody putting their boots and stuff and running out to go help. That was the kind of bell, that, and that was the kind of heart that the members of Queen Chapel had and still have today. Today, because of the age of the bell and the weight of the bell, and of course you know, today <laughs> the lumber and the supplies and things that we purchase, they are not as sturdy. You all know I'm right. They're not they are not built to the quality of the standard, which was built back in the 1800s and the early 1900s, all the way up to, I would say, probably what, 1950? And right after that, everything started declining because everybody, you know, was money hungry. Well, of course, we had to take the bell down because of the weight of it, and we had done some repairs, and, and you weren't able to stay, stand up there, but it is now kept down and being ready to be put on display uh, as part of our history. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I, I have to keep up with my time. Trey, you keeping me here. As time marched on, I, I just get excited when I talk about, oh, I almost go to crying, but I just get excited when I talk about Kingston and when I talk about Queen Chapel and just, you know, my people and, of course, you're my people as well about our people and uh, how and what we've gone through. But anyway, so Queen Chapel, Queen Chapel, marched on down, bring you up to current time. Our historian, Nellie Margaret Harris Applin, she loves to dig and she loves history dearly. I love it as well, but she has a born uh, natural desire to research and pull all of this together. Well, she, um, had got wind of and by way of um, my other first cousin, and most of you all know her, Ernestine Young Jones. And that's another story. Our grandfather, I'll just slip that in. Our grandfather, Ernestine, and my grandfather, his name was Goliath Young. And he stood seven feet tall. Goliath, Goliath Young, and you can wonder about the name. The name was Goliath Young, and out of his uh, children, he had seven, he, he and my grandmother had seven children, and out of their seven, it was only three boys, okay? And so when everybody started having the children, especially his sons, he took the sons and the wives together and told them that uh, when they have children, he wanted some boys to carry the young name. Listen to me here. And so when the children started coming on the young family land over there in Kingston. It was 28 girls. <laughs> It was 28 girls at the time, and, and it was three boys. <laughs> three boys. So granddaddy came and told our parents that the girls, all of us, coming along, he didn't care who we married, but we had to take that young name. We had to hold on to the young part of it. Oh, we loved our granddaddy, and we admired him. So I remember sitting there. And I said, well, I'm not going <laughs> to take that young name. I said, I'm going to get married and I'm going to be whatever they want me to be. But anyway, Granddad explained it to us and we all agreed. And so that's why today I'm Louise Young Harris. And today, y'all know Ernestine? Ernestine, what she say? Ernestine Young Jones. My sister Shirley Young Dudley. Yes. My other sister, Patricia Ann George, and Patricia Ann Young George, we all took the young name and went on. And we're very proud and thankful that we did that for our grandfather today. But anyway, getting back to Queen Chapel, 
Margaret researched and she found out because another thing, she had married into the Applin family. So she was researching their family and also researching you know, our family as well. And so she found out by way of Ernestine that uh, the former uh, First Lady Michelle Obama was writing her bio and uh, she was trying to find some information in regards to her lineage. And so we started digging on this side because the name of Mavelia, Madame Magruder, Shields, amen, had come up. And so, and the name rung a bell. And so Margaret talked to her, her husband, which is David uh, Lee Applin, and told, talked to him, said, isn't that your grandmother's name? He said, well, yeah. Said, she said, because, you know, they had court and they didn't got married and they got children. She said, so that's the lady that sat down there at the house was in the rocking chair reading the Bible and took care of you all. He said, yeah, that's my uh, daddy's grandmother. And she said, well, they're saying that woman is connected to Michelle Obama. He said, ah, no, couldn't be, couldn't be, not, not, not nanny. Could no way possible. Well, they went on a scavenger hunt, a lineage, lineage hunt. They, and so Nellie and Margaret, she came down to uh, the courthouse or came over to uh, wherever they keep the records, she came and um, the little lady, I don't know if she's still living or not, will be up there with the ancestry information. She had the two long ponytails, the plaits. Y'all know who I'm talking about. But be in the old courthouse. Yeah, Linda, Cochran. Linda Cochran. She got with Linda Cochran and they dug through the records and dug and found the information and Margaret come back and she told, she said, there's a trail, we got a trail going to the White House. Oh, we thought a trail going to the, no way, from Kingston and no way. And then Margaret said, and you know she was a member of Queen Chapel. And we said, what? <laughs> I mean, hey, we pulled our shoulders back by then. And I said, what? Y'all know we country. <laughs> we said, there's no way possible. Well, as they continue to do that, next thing you know, here come the state of Georgia, economic development, the state of Georgia. Here come PBS. Yes, 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 yes. Here come all kind of book writers. Here come cameras. Here come, t here they come. All roads leading to Kingston because of the trail to the White House and over at Queen Chapel. Next thing we know, they calling, and I was an assistant pastor at that time, and next thing you know, they were calling and they were saying, we, uh, we're coming with cadavers and we're coming with machines and we're going we gonna to find out, you know, if this is really true because, you know, you can't do anything today unless that D, what? And that DNA, amen. Let some people say, Dinah got to speak. <laughs> so they came, you know, and checked the DNA. And it was these instruments, you know, and they ran across the, uh, the cemetery, our historical cemetery. And so... Uh, Mr. Bill Hill, he's our oldest gentleman there. He told him exactly where she was born because she served as a midwife there in the Kingston area. He showed him exactly where she was born. And they took that instrument and they ran it down through that and got DNA and found out, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Went back, Michelle checked, yes, indeed. It was all authentic. Well, we now on the record. So here come tour buses, here come everybody, here come the state of Georgia, here they come. And a grand program, a grand program was presented, was presented, not by Queen Chapel, not by the city of Kingston, but by the state of Georgia. Woo-hoo! Oh, you can't get any higher than that. And you know what, children? And when all of that happened and found out what was going on, where she come from, South Carolina, by way of Rex and then by way of Kingston, Bartow County and Kingston. So all of them had to be incorporated as well. So the story got even greater. And so then here we are, you know, whoo whoo, you know, the Applins and we just looking, you know, how some people just look out of one eye. We just saw the black side. And so uh, white too. I'm like, what? what? 
trust me now. And I'm up there, I'm the first thing on the road, hollering, what, what? And then my sister had to nudge me and said, hush. I said, what is it? She said, now don't you forget, our granddaddy is white. Yes, Saul Moore, my, grand, my mother's father is white. So, you know, and so my sister nudged me and said, what? Stop that. And so, yes, because of her lineage and her livelihood, Maddie, I'm talking about Magruder, Melvinia, and her children that she bore, and they come also, the, the white family, the black family, all of us came together and sat there in Queen Chapel Methodist Church. And then the story started unraveling about her son and when Melvinia died and uh, the, the, the casket that was sent from Birmingham, Alabama and the, you know, the, the expense of it, all of that. And, and, you know, and then you know, it, it came to fruition that her body lied right there in front of the pulpit at Queen Chapel, her service. Her funeral service was held there because she was a mother of the church and taken outside behind the church and buried. And there today you will see a monument recognizing her on behalf of her and her family. It's there. And the interesting thing is, and when the family and the committee in the state of Georgia, and by this time the federal government had gotten in it too because they wanted to offer money and provide grants and stuff to help us to get a headstone that would signify her burial spot. And at this time, and when paperwork came back and asked to where uh, the stone would be purchased, we looked down and we saw that it was coming in from Nigeria, Africa. The stone. I said, from slavery? Yes, of course, yes, from slavery all the way to the White House. And so that is where the stone is, you know, erected and where it came from. But ladies and gentlemen, I could talk all day, but I know you got to get back to work or you got to do some other things as well. And I, I know you've had to try to consume your lunch as well. But Queen Chapel doors today still where I serve as the senior pastor. And as my mother would say, if she was here today and standing in front of you, Queen Chapel doors swing low. <laughs> Sweet Cheria hangs on welcoming arms. Queen Chapel rolls out the red carpet each and every day for everyone to come and be a part of our congregation, come and be a part of our lives, and come and help us to tell the story, but most importantly, to help us to share the gospel. Ladies and gentlemen, again, you have your bag of information in front of you with additional information, and certainly I hope, uh, well, yeah, it's, it's kind of flashing. Those are some little photos, some little pictures of um, the congregation, me and uh, the congregation, the children, and some of them, and some of them look a little bit older. Why? Because we've been out because of COVID. So we, uh, you know, picture taken, everybody had to stay home, take your own pictures at home, <laughs> selfie at home, <laughs> right? And, and that's another thing. And as we went into the, the COVID arena, we too, Queen Chapel, had to join <laughs> the media world. <laughs> we had to step it up. Horse and buggy days were over. We had to step it up once again. So we now have a, which we already had before all of this happened, but we have a Facebook page. I invite you to please join us. Go over there and check us out. Queen Chapel Methodist Church, our Facebook book page, check us out, go over there and uh, just see what we're doing. You're you, uh, certainly welcome to check out my personal Facebook page, L, uh, Louise Young Harris, of course that Young is in there, Louise Young Harris is there, so pull it up and see what we're doing. And um, 
I want you all to please check out the City of Kingston. We have a page there as well. I got to get that plug in there. You know I'm a city councilwoman. This is my second four-year term, so check out Kingston as well. And also, I serve as the president of the Noble Hill Wheeler Memorial Center, and we have an event coming up this Saturday at 12 noon, a salute to black history. So we invite you to register for that presentation. So, and also we have a Facebook page and we have our web page and we have several things going on. So check out Nova Hill as well. And of course, we do want you to stay in tune as to what Bartow History uh, is doing. Mr. Trey Gain and his beautiful, wonderful staff. And we're so thankful because they show us love and always incorporate us into what they're doing. So you all please continue to support the Bartow History Center as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I do thank you so much for your time today. I thank you so much for your patience. I thank you so much for having smiles on your face. And I certainly hope, and it is my prayer, that I have presented something to you today that you can take away as a nugget and can share along the way in regards to the Queen Chapel Independent Methodist Church, once known as what? The Colored Church. The Colored Church. <laughs> but thank God Almighty, because of the Primitive Baptist Church, we now have an identity. And so, and with that identity, we came out of the pool of the colored churches. And by way of our meeting, we decided we would be what? The, queen. the what? The queen. I can't hear you. The queen. The queen. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.